So this story is a great microcosm of the kind of deals that are cut in Washington, D.C. among Democrats and Republicans. This is from the Washington Post. They say the following. Congressional lawmakers and the White House are on the verge of reaching a sweeping agreement that would extend 12 weeks of paid parental leave to federal workers in exchange for making Space Force the sixth branch of the U.S. military, according to four people with knowledge of the tentative deal. The deal is part of a defense authorization bill that is slated to pass this month. If consummated, the agreement could mark one of the biggest deals President Trump ha has cut with Congress. It would secure a massive expansion of benefits for federal workers, something Democrats have long sought in exchange for a realignment of the U.S. military that Trump has sought to secure as part of his legacy. Twelve weeks of paid parental leave to federal workers in exchange for the Space Force becoming the sixth branch of the U.S. military. Now, I'm no budget expert, but that doesn't exactly seem like an even trade to me. So, don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. I'm the biggest supporter imaginable of um, giving workers 12 weeks of paid parental leave. I mean... Obviously, I would go further and I would mandate that that's the case for all workers or at the very least all workers um, that work with companies that are bigger than like, you know, 25 staff members or what have you. So, yeah, I'm on that team and I push for that all the time. A conversation we've had on this show repeatedly, I've showed you the chart before of the U.S. versus the rest of the of the world when it comes to paid time off by law. Uh, now, in those instances, I think that that chart includes uh, vacation time, for example. But long story short, every other country has paid time off by law, whether it's parental leave, vacation time, usually it's an amalgamation. And the only lonely, solitary country that doesn't is us. We got a little, little donut there on that chart that I've shown you guys many times. And we still do. We still do. Some people, you know have, say, two weeks paid time off, but that's not because the law mandates it. It's because of the good graces of their employer. So it's a terrible, disastrous situation. Now, again, in this case, it's just federal workers that we're talking about, but the trade would be Republicans say, okay, well, we'll give you the paid time off if you guys give us the Space Force. I don't know the numbers, and none of the articles that I found on this went into the specific numbers, but my guess is that the Space Force would end up costing hundreds of billions of dollars when all is said and done. And the paid parental leave for federal workers program, it might clock in at less than a billion dollars. So we're talking about giant, gargantuan cost differences. But... This is indicative of the exact kind of deals that go on in Washington, D.C. It's like, oh, Democrats, we'll give you the tiniest of tiny crumbs that you've ever seen in your entire life. And Republicans, let's give you whatever it is that you want. Guys, we already have a military that is absurdly large. You guys know this because we talk about every year when they pass the military budget. The one from a year or two ago... You know, even Elizabeth Warren voted for it, and it gave like a $100 billion increase to Trump's military budget. That was even more than he was asking for. So somehow, even though all these idiots scream about, how are we going to pay for basic things for the American people, when it comes to endless military spending, they're like, yeah, no, go right ahead. I'm not even going to bat an eyelash. I'm going to support it, no questions asked. But in return for that, probably spending hundreds of billions of dollars more on top of our already insane budget they're like we'll give you some we'll give you a little bit of something here some paid time off i mean it really is embarrassing and this is what happens when you have a republican party that is um obnoxiously strong and aggressive and you have a democratic party that is fundamentally unwilling to even make their own case i wouldn't be surprised if this entire deal was the republicans idea where they said, okay, we'll give the Democrats something, but we have to get Space Force implemented. And the whole idea of a Space Force, like, 
you do realize that if we get to that point where we need military equipment in space, it's a wrap for humanity. You do get that, right? Like, I don't think people fully grasp the times that we're in. We're at a time and place where if there's happens to be a conflict between two major world powers, say goodnight to humanity. You could say, Kyle, that's hyperbole. It's not. It's really not. Because we have these things called nuclear weapons now. If a major power gets attacked, their fingers are on a hair trigger, and it's right by that red button. And we're rolling the dice here. We're rolling the dice with our future. I mean, we've already done that a thousand times over when it comes to climate change. For over a decade now, scientists have been saying, it's worse than the worst case scenario. Do something. And, you know, lawmakers are sitting around like... <laughs> Even the Paris Climate Agreement was a tiny incremental step in the right direction. That wasn't nearly enough. Um, but that shows you their foresight. And that shows you their intelligence. And it shows you that they're deeply unserious people doing a serious job. Where we have hundreds of thousands of homeless people, for example. And before we get a program to deal with that, we're going to get a space force. A space force. How many times have I told you guys that report that comes out every other year from the um, Society of Civil Engineers? And what do they say? They say, our infrastructure gets a grade of D+. Plus. It's abysmal. And anybody who's been to an airport in the U.S. knows that. Among, you know, other things like just driving on the road. So we have that, the country crumbling, schools not doing great, homeless people, you know, homeless numbers going up, trending upwards, 7 million people who lost their health insurance just under Donald Trump's uh, time in office. And the response is, let's do a space force. The only upside of this is there will probably be more technological breakthroughs as a result of starting something like a Space Force because, um, as Lilith has taught me, the reason why we had so many technological breakthroughs in the first place was because of NASA. When they do problem solving to try to, you know, fix issues um, dealing with space travel, you end up, like, inadvertently creating a lot of you know, different technologies that are amazing for civilian life. Um, so there could be the inadvertent upside of, like, amazing technological breakthroughs. But, you know, call me old-fashioned, I wish we could just get those technological breakthroughs by focusing on doing those technological breakthroughs. Or maybe by focusing on, you know, spending billions of tax dollars to cure cancer. Or heart disease. Or fill in the blank which, with whatever issue is currently plaguing humanity massively. Like... We could directly focus on that, or we could try to build a, you know, multi-billion dollar space force for potential World War III as we fight over resources on the moon, or Mars, or whatever it might be, fill in the blank. Some asteroid, you know, coming towards Earth that happens to have a lot of diamonds in it that we're trying to latch onto and get diamonds from. It's amazing how, how creative the government and the military industrial complex and elites can be when it's something like that. And it's also amazing how they totally lack creativity and empathy and concern when it's problems that are kind of easily solvable, like ending homelessness. When it comes to that, they're like, you know, I don't know, man, just can't do it. I have no idea. I have no idea how to do that. They're homeless. <laughs> what are they lacking? Is it money and homes? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, hey, let's build tanks that could roll around on the moon. Let's build military equipment that functions properly in space. Let's actually try to create the movie Star Wars in real life by further feeding the military-industrial complex. They're like, yeah, we can figure out how to do all that. And then some. God damn it, man. It's so upsetting. It's so depressing. And you do know this is a just a giant giveaway to Raytheon, Boeing, um, you know, Halliburton, KBR, whatever. I don't I don't know if that's still their name because they uh, had to rebrand a few times since it was it became readily apparent that they were the biggest war profiteers of all time, and they were just robbing taxpayers blind. So I don't know if that's still their name, 
but uh, all the defense contractors, what Space Force really boils down to is not just Space Force. It's about how can we give more money to the military industrial complex and continue to feed that beast in preposterous ways. Because that's what we've been doing um, in a stunning way. Definitely since the War on Terror. You can make an argument post-World War II. It's gotten worse post-War on Terror. And those numbers are going up and up and up and up and up. Um, but as that threat decreases and it becomes less obvious that we need all that military spending, they have to come up with new tricks to keep feeding the beast that is the military-industrial complex. And this is their new one. Let's do Space Force. We need a whole new branch of the military, so what are you going to do? You know, it's going to cost hundreds of billions of dollars. It might end up costing trillions of dollars, guys. Remember the F-35-2 fighter plane that they spent over a trillion dollars on and it couldn't even get off the ground for a while? I think now it gets off the ground, but over a trillion dollars they spent on that. So a whole new branch of the military, you don't think it's possible to get over a trillion dollars? And the trade-off, again, is like probably less than a billion when it comes to paid time off. Remember, just the increase in the military budget from 2017, just that increase of 80 to 100 billion, we, free college costs 60 billion. We could have done free college and had a lot of money left over as opposed to doing that, just the increase in the military budget in 2017. So this is, this is how they think of stuff. And this is where their priorities lie. And uh, again, it just drives me crazy that this is not on the forefront, and this is not headline news on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one, as if they would oppose this. It drives me crazy, because any serious reporter, journalist, commentator would look at this state of affairs and say the same thing that I'm saying, which is the priorities are so absurdly out of whack that it's comical, but also tragic.